Good morning, welcome. This is a special edition of News Desk. In place of that, we are bringing you the live coverage of the unveiling of Black Stars head coach Chris Hewting. That will take place at the SG Mall in Kumase. The program is expected to start at 10, but we understand, of course, it's starting late. So from now till we get those visuals from Kumase, we'll be giving you unrivaled perspectives as far as uh, this whole Chris Heating unveiling is concerned. Um, the details of how long the contract is, uh, what targets have been set for him, all of those things will be made known to us uh, during that particular press conference in Kumasi. And they're doing all of that in the Ashanti regional capital in anticipation of uh, Thursday's Africa Cup of Nations qualifier against Angola. That match will kick off at 4 p.m. on Thursday at the Babayara Sports Stadium. The rest of the players have already started to arrive, and later today there will be a press conference. Um, later today there will be a training session, I beg your pardon, at the Crossball Stadium, supervised by assistant coach George Wating, and then uh, the team will leave for Kumasi on Tuesday, have one training session in the afternoon, then another on Wednesday before the game on Thursday. So just two training sessions preceding already in Kumasi. So, as I indicated, the unveiling ceremony itself uh, has not started yet. In fact, before we came in here, we were told that chairs were now being arranged. Uh, so as a result of that, I've brought in two of um, my colleagues here uh, to help us put perspective into everything that will be happening in Kumasi and pretty much everything Black Stars. Gary L. Smith uh, and Daniel Cranting have joined me here. Guys, welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome to News Desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously, uh, this is a big deal. It's become the norm. Um, the last big coach we unveiled was <coughs> Milovan Rahivac. And um, I remember Daniel Cranton's very worst that very day. He says he likes his Milo take after a few, <laughs> after a few months. He was fucked. Okay, okay. We didn't do that. <laughs> We didn't have an unveiling for Uto. It was a World Cup yeah. we did not. squad announcement, which yeah. was very... Exactly. Which was pretty was huge. big, yeah. Um, yeah. But we've become used to these sorts of ceremonies for our coaches. Um, Gary, let me begin with you. I mean, this whole idea of taking the unveiling there, I mean, it's pretty smart, isn't it? Yeah, very smart. Um, yeah. So the news came about 10 days ago that they were taking it to Kumasi. Yeah. Um, and that was after the confirmation that the game will be played at Babayara. Mm -hmm. Then we also heard that, you know, in addition to the unveiling there, there'll be a little um, pre-press, yes. which the GFA did last week. We understand that the GFA communication team were there, you know, going from radio station to radio station and television station, <coughs> um, just to whip up interest. Yeah. As a result, um, they got the, if you understand the political football landscape. Mm -hmm. They got Asante Kotoko's um, NCC to also advocate for the Black Stars to, um, you know, people to go to the stadium to watch. And it's very important because, sure. I mean, as the multimedia group has been campaigning for since January, the attendances for games, especially in the big cities, have been quite low. Yeah. And we saw the culmination of that with the President's Cup here in Accra, where embarrassingly, you know, with the President the presence of the president, His Excellency, um, the attendance was nothing to write home about. Yeah. Also, it must be said, um, the GFA should be given a, a bit of a, uh, what, what should we say? Credit. Credit, yeah. you know, which we don't do a lot these days because um, a lot of, of, of things are not going in their favor. But they, in conjunction with the National Sports Authority, have also decreased, they've reduced the rates of the upcoming game on Thursday to, I believe, what is one of the lowest in, I was very in, a, surprised. in a very, very long time. So, Just to um, be specific. 20 cities. 20 cities. It's incredible. For popular stand. Yeah. I believe uh, 50 cities. F 20, 50, 70, I think. Uh, yes. 20, 50, uh, 70. Wow, that's really so cheap. The VIP highest, tickets are 70 cities. 70 cities. There's a 30 city ticket too. Mm. Uh, yeah, not even Ghana Premier League matches. <laughs> no, <laughs> go like. So, I mean, for now, at least somebody's doing their homework. They've realized that, look, 
if we economic if, conditions. Yeah, economic conditions, if we do things, if it's business as usual, we are going to have an eyesore of it. And they don't want Chris Hilton to start, you know, on a on a whatever note. Um, I think it was you who was making the analysis that or it was you on the space mm -hmm. who was making the analysis. It was Danny last week Friday. Yeah. Um, that the last three Black Stars qualifications have not started well. I think it was you who was making them, all of you, yeah. on this yeah. space. Um, and so knowing that, they want to back the trend. And one of the surest ways to back the trend is to get the people to the stadium. One of the surest ways to get the people to the stadium is to make sure that they know him. So you saw the video. Um, they took the step of Chris Hutton buried his father last week, Wednesday. Yeah. He arrived in Ghana on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So his father was buried in the UK. Just to give you some perspective, he was on the next flight to Ghana, the next BA on Thursday. Yeah. Um, on Friday was Christian Achu's funeral. Yeah. On Friday, he signed a contract. That's a lot of work. He signed a contract on Friday. Saturday, he has on one or two. Sunday, he was taken to Kumasi for Akwesi Day. Um, yeah, and then, you know, they welcomed him in a proper Kumasi style. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Some people said it was a welcome. Some people said it was yeah, harassment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I, I wish we could. Show, in fact, we'll no, we'll show the visuals. We'll show you some of those visuals yeah, of the yeah. welcome. Uh, our producers are working on it, as well as the Babaya Sports Stadium pitch. Um, I've seen it, and we'll try and show it to you as well. So, uh, <laughs> Mubarak, I'm sure, can get this. I, I think even before we begin, yeah, the, we should give a special props to our Kumasi team. They have been. Love, they have been on top of it. Yeah, Love FM and Ishira FM. Yeah. Big shout to all big of big them. To before them. we forget, before Zando, we forget. Delali, Zando's, Delali, and all the guys. The, Ayala and the rest of the guys. So. Um, Daniel, mm. let's, let's, uh, let's backtrack a little bit about the decision to hire Chris Hutton in the first place because this is what uh, is all about. So that's the arrival of Chris Hutton, obviously. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I wish you we know, could get I'm a volume. Saving, I'm saving some of you guys. Well, maybe not saving you, but <laughs> if, we put the sound, <laughs> if we put the sound up there... <laughs> At some point, somebody said, so what did he say? He said, I'm not, I love that. Ghana has ended. <laughs> <laughs> but man, yeah, that's a that's incredible reception. No, that, I no, mean this that, is what that is that is Kumasi. That's Kumasi for yeah. you. That's what we like to see. Yeah, Champion. Yeah. yeah. Ochito, pa, pa, pa. No size. <laughs> uh, Bosu. Why are you doing that? Anyway, so it was great to see Chris Hutton received that way. Uh, feel loved, feel belonged. I mean, all those things are very important. Mm -hmm. And we will get to the whole idea of a first qualifying game after a World Cup match. The last one, immediately after a World Cup that Ghana played, was one of the most poisonous atmospheres I have ever seen in the history of covering the Black Stars. It was Ghana against Uganda. Before that, the pre-match press conference um, resulted in all kinds of issues. Slaps were flying about. It was quite toxic. Uh, we'll talk about the significance of this game and how it can curtail all of those things. But Daniel, let's talk about the decision to hire Chris Hutton. This has been a decision long coming. Mm -hmm. um, some people probably might say it's one year too late. Exactly. And it looked like it was going to happen and then uh, it was sort of <laughs> for, for Otuadu. But um, look, I think it's, the GFA has, give, has given this a, a long thought. Yeah. 
And I feel it's the right decision. It's the right decision because it's, it, it brings continuity. And it's really important. We need to reflect and remember where we are as, where we are as, a, as a national team. Okay. Remember the disaster of the AFCON in Cameroon. Ghana's worst ever performance. We lost to Comoros, finished bottom of the group. Um, worst ever. Yeah. And then straight after that, we went into a World Cup uh, uh, qualification, uh, qualification playoff against Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that's when Otuado and Chris Hutton as technical advisor came in. Now, during that period, they've been doing some work. And I say they because you can tell it was a collective yeah. effort. They've been doing some work. And you don't want that work just to be uh, halved and then somebody else to, 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 to come and continue. Because then it, it makes it very difficult when continuity, continuity is not... Is not sustained. So it was very important for us to get somebody, at least a technical head, who has already been with this team before. And look, the wealth of experience that he comes with. We know what he's done in the Premier League. We know what he's done in terms of management. He's extremely experienced. And again, to be with this team for one year, to be part of the technical decisions um, concerning this team for one year, he knows the players through and through. He knows their strengths. He knows their weaknesses. He's already, and we know that he's been in contact with some of the players who de decided to come and play for Ghana. So he has a strong influence in this team. And it's very important, it was very important for us to continue that, that, um, that continuity yeah. from the World Cup period, of before the World Cup period. We already started the uh, Afghan qualifiers, in fact. So it's very important to have this. And what I'm actually looking forward to is the length of the contract that is given, because we've seen... Otuado's time it was stopgap thing. So six months. Yeah, six months. Take us to the World Cup. After the World Cup, take us after the World Cup. No. We want something that is sustainable. Yeah. Because he is Chris Hutton fits the bill. He has the experience. He's already had an internship with the team. So he's a sort of uh, head coach that you can gamble on and say, we are giving you three, four years to fix this team. You're not saying that at the end of the three years, by all means you'll win something. But at least he has the capability of taking this team to the next level, taking this team back to, let's say, four or five years ago, where we expected to reach yeah. a semi-final of every AFCON. That is where Ghana is supposed to be. Because that's where his pedigree is. That's it? Exactly. Building. Building. And that's what he is. He's, he's dealing with uh, Brighton. We all saw the good work he did with Newcastle. Brighton. Newcastle. Newcastle with Nottingham Forest. So he has that, he, he, he has the know-how. Yeah. He knows exactly what he's about when it comes to um, uh, projects like this. And it is extremely important for us to, give him the go ahead and give him the support also to be and able to freedom give him, and freedom that is extremely <laughs> important <laughs> and give him the freedom to be able to to thrive because look we have it i always say this we have a talented pool of players and it has the right blend of youth and experience yeah. perfect that any top manager will want to <clears> take care <throat> of so it's about giving him the time to be able to imbibe them with his ideas his uh, philosophies and then I have no doubt that if he's given these three things, time, if he's given the freedom, look, this and guy will resources. be able to, and resources, he'll be able to take us to the next if, level. If, if, if I may, on the, on the point of having a good team, yeah. this weekend, I mean, every, every, every Monday, we have a, a look yep. back at the weekend and of Ghanaians abroad and what they have done. And uh, if you get to our Twitter, you will find it there. Yeah. And it's on my journal line on, um, as well. You look at the names <coughs> you mentioned and the clubs they are playing for and the football they are playing, mm -hmm. and you start to feel sorry for Chris Hutton already because it's a very good headache to have. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, it was a similar headache Otuado had. Yeah. I mean, largely the squad he took for the World Cup, bar about three or four names that you know we felt were contentious, drop yeah. out, and some who were brought in and a few people were not did not agree. We 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 seem to have a crop of. 19 to 24, 25 year olds True. who are super exciting to watch, yeah. who are for the future, who are ready to go, and who are ready to take us to 2028, 20, 29. Yeah, by if, the way, Gary, before yeah. you continue, these are visuals from the press conference room where Chris Hitchin is suspected to be unveiled. You can see the GFA's uh, chief marketing manager uh, there, uh, our, very, <laughs> our very, very good friend. Uh, making sure that all of the pull-ups and backdrops are all fixed. But um, so um, I think it is expected that this press conference will start a little later than originally announced. But the moment we have the visuals, we'll take you over to Kumasi, of course. Continue. Yeah. So I was saying we have a pool of 19 to 25, 26 year olds who are really exciting and it falls bank into what Daniel describes as youth and experience. Yeah. We don't have a team who have, but now, who have played 
um, or maybe 10 players that you can readily call on from the World Cup who will say they played six Afghans, five Afghans, like yeah, we no, previously no, no. had. Three. Who, like we previously had, yeah. apart from the IU brothers, of yeah. course, and one or two others, depending on who comes in and out. But what we do have now, they have World Cup experience. True. You understand? That's a big deal. That's a big deal. And when they enter that dugout against Angola, most of them would have, I mean, they'll be coming out to face an Angolan team who will look across from them and say, these guys have been to the World Cup. Let's give them the respect they deserve. Yeah. Which it does not equate a certain experience that three Afghans can give you. Um, the experience that playing in Afghan qualifiers two, three times can give you as well. Yeah. But it does offer one, that the chemistry from the World Cup and all the small, small things that we saw were the mistakes on the pitch. Yeah. Some, I don't like using this word, but I have to. Telepathy, yeah. you know, will be there. That chemistry. chemistry will be there. Then you've got a manager, crucially, who was there, who was in the background, but, you know, yes. Obviously. For, for, to, to put it um, euphemistically, a man with two eyes, two ears, was watching, was listening to everything, and, I mean, knows what he is about. Um, Chris Hilton also. What I worry for him are the three things that he spoke about. The, the freedom. And I think, you know, some people who are watching and listening, because this is live on Joy FM as well, will say that why are these people, why do keep, these people keep banging on about the freedom? <laughs> because it is a thing. You know, it is not just a Ghanaian thing we concede, but there's a thin line between suggestion and Imposition. Imposition, or as they say in diplomatic circles, suggesting strongly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, because, yeah, because in, in, in certain circles, when I suggest to you strongly, yeah. it means that you've got to do it. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you were recording him, he, you wouldn't quote him as of saying course. that, go and do it, yeah. you know. But Chris is a 64-year-old man. He's been there. He's done that as a player, as a coach. Yeah, he's not won a whole lot of things. But the sort of experience he brings, if the Black Stars players check their phones, Google this man and see where he has been and what he has done, yeah. they should be flying today and tomorrow into Ghana thinking, hmm, this is somebody I can listen to and somebody I can trust. That's right. And so th that is what, for me, this unveiling, yeah. this is what it should That's achieve. what excites you most. That excites me. Yeah. That is what excites me for on behalf of the players. That when they are coming from their teams and they have, and you know, they have these sorts of conversations with their what teammates, yeah, they with, the their, with their club coaches. They the and then they, they, they ask them, so who is your coach? He says, Chris Hutton. Their manager is going to say, oh, Chris Hutton is your national team coach. Deal. It's going to be like, I mean, if Chris Hutton picks up the phone and calls your manager, yeah. he will answer. He will answer. <laughs> you know, and all <laughs> those true. things. And for me, the experience, I probably knew this, but the three weeks I spent in Europe before the World Cup recording these guys, <clears throat> you know, I had the privilege of speaking to some of their technical team members, their yeah. club teammates, yeah. and these things. And you remember in all the interviews I did for Star Connect, I asked every single one of them, are you the only person from your team that is likely going, because at the time they had, the, the final squad had not come yet. Are you the only one who is likely, you know, the 55-man squad had come? Yeah to go to the World Cup. And for some of them, they were the only ones in their clubs who were going to the World Cup. Do you know what it does for you? Wow. Yeah. It's, a, it's, 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 it's a big deal. You know, you remember the whole uh, Fred Duncan story? Mm -hmm. He said, you know, he got he even, he was almost depressed by constantly being left, left out. out. Uh, he was not almost depressed. He was depressed. He was depressed. There you go. So, um, national team is a big deal. It has a lot for players, like Gary said. And to go to the World Cup, that's a massive, massive deal. Uh, all right. In due course, we will show you the Black Star squad uh, that the guys have been talking about, how excited they are. Um, you know, it's been out for a few days now, uh, but I know that some people too might have, you might have forgotten who's in the squad. So we'll put it on the screen. I'll remind you who is in Chris Hutton's first squad. It's 25 players, some of whom have already arrived in the country. But let's cross over to Kumasi now, where my colleague Delali Atiase is standing by. 
in that press conference room. Yeah, it's allergic groups so far that we've seen here. We don't know which other personalities are going to accompany uh, Coach Chris Hilton when he does make his way to the auditorium for the unveiling ceremony. But what we can tell you is that he is in Kumasi. Yesterday they were in Kumasi at the Mesha Palace. They left after the, at the Kessier. They came this morning. They'll be leaving again this morning because Chris Hilton, I'm told, um, has said that he wants to be with the team. He wants to train with them and he wants to arrive with them back in Kumasi tomorrow. So that's the information that we have now. But the information is that he is here. He is in town. He is in Kumasi. And he's going to be joining us here at the SG Mall any moment from now for the unveiling ceremony uh, to get started. Um, I spoke to the communications director of the FA just before uh, we got in here and he told me that other dignitaries, other officials from the FA and from government side, from the Ministry of Youth and Sports are all going to join us here at the SG Mall. So as we speak now, uh, we are just about getting ready for the event to start. We are waiting for the arrival of Chris Hilton to join us in here and the other technical team members for the event itself to start. Okay, so I'll try and see whether I can get some one or two personalities here to speak to. Um, I have our senior colleague, um, Jan Pofankra, who is with us over here. Yeah, um, good morning to you. Sorry to ambush you this way. That's okay. But um, we are all here to witness the unveiling of Chris Hilton. Um, as we speak now, we don't know officially how many years contract he's, he's been given or not. But for you, what are your expectations from him coming in as the new coach for the Black Stars? Yeah, I mean, Dela, obviously... Um Many of us are not surprised. We thought succession-wise, it would be the best decision to have Chris Hewson coming in. Expectations are always huge, and I think he knows that the World Cup would have been a great platform for him to get acclimatized, get acquainted, look at what went wrong or things that didn't go right, and things that went right. He has a perfect template. He's not entirely new, so he has an advantage of knowing the setup, being away with the boys in camp, selection process, scouting, monitoring, he's in a better position. Normally the coaches come in rather fresh. He has had time to really get into that role. So basically what he's doing is stepping into the shoes of uh, Otto Addo. But arguably, Chris is a senior and more experienced coach. So I think in that sense, he has an advantage. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm optimistic that Chris Hewton should be able to deliver. Okay. All right. So you had me speak to Jan Pofuankra. Um, he is our senior colleague in here. Let's see whether we can also speak to one fine gentleman, a friend of mine as well, Patrick Akutu. Yeah, but um, I'm he... from London, huh? <laughs> London was good. Patrick, how are you doing? I'm, yeah, I'm doing great. It's a good time. It's, a good, it's really a good All right. So we are live on Joy TV. We are at SG Mall. That is where the unveiling of Chris Hewton is going to happen any moment from now. But Akutu, just to find out from you, your expectations of the event today, and then what do you make of Chris Hilton, his appointment, and we think that whether he can take the Black Stars far. It's a brilliant one. I mean, the decision by the Football Association to bring the unveiling ceremony to the Citadel of Football, the home of the Black Stars here in Kumase, is, 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 is an admirable one. I am very, very delighted with uh, what I've seen here. Uh, a lot of work has gone into it. Uh, I, I am confident that Chris Hilton is the right man for the job. There appears to be a certain level of uh, acceptability uh, from the general public ever since the, the announcement was made by, by, by the Ghana Football Association. And so hopefully we can ride on that and, and give him a massive support uh, to ensure that uh, he succeeds. If he succeeds, he succeeds for all of us. So it is, an, it is in our collective interest to ensure that we, 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 we press all the necessary buttons to ensure uh, that we, we finally uh, reach the final dream that we've all been talking about but the 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 unveiling is brilliant the setup is brilliant uh, our colleagues are here in the media drops here and and it's, it's, it's a brilliant stuff uh, we are waiting for Chris to mount the podium and I'm sure the uh, colleague journalists are ready to fire in all the blank spaces and the questions, but I'm sure he has all the answers for it. Well, um, you've been in town since last week, yeah. and I guess that your presence here is to promote the game. Now, just to find out from you, the few days have you spent in Kumasi so far, you think that you are you're catching the euphoria, you think that Kumasi is ready for the game on Thursday? Kumasi has always been ready. I mean, the good people of Kumasi have been very magnanimous with, with the national team. The, the kind of support that the Black Stars have enjoyed uh, in Kumasi has been beyond expectations and I saw Kumasi rise up in unison when we played against Nigeria in that crucial World Cup decider. Uh, we are hopeful that we'll get somewhere anything closer to those numbers but of course we are talking about a team that, that is growing in confidence, a very young team, talented team and Kumasi has been very very receptive uh, for, 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 for us and 
I am really looking forward to it and we are very confident that many, many, many people uh, will fill the Babara Stadium on Thursday at 4 p.m. We are ready. I mean, Kudus is coming. What do you expect, my brother? Kudus is in town. Um, the Kudus is in town. Inaki is playing first match ever since he made that important decision to switch to play for, the, for, for Ghana. He's also in town. Uh, Tariq Lam to be playing for the first time in front of the Kumasi fans. Salisu is coming home. He's a homeboy. He's a Kumasi boy. He's coming home and playing in front of his home fans. So just come and watch Kudus. I mean, this, this, this party is in. This is what we have, my brother, and we are looking for a good time here in Kumasi. All right, Patrick, thank you very much. So that was Patrick Akoto just gone by. We are still live on Joy TV, Joy Prime, and all our other social, all our other social media handles. We are live from the SG Mall in Kumasi, where we are going to have the unveiling of the newly appointed Black Stars coach, Chris Hilton. He is expected to join us in here at the auditorium any moment from now and um, definitely we'll be asking him a lot of questions about the team and uh, what we should be expecting from him and his technical team after today we know that their first assignment is on thursday here in kumas when they play against the palancas negras of angola and um, a win for him will be a good start for him it will be the right tonic for him as he ascends the throne as the coach of the Sierra national team the black stars there is another wonderful colleague with him here manoto foima um, a lot has been said about Chris Hilton. Many feel that he's the perfect man for the position. For you, um, is it welcoming news for Ghana to have Chris Hilton as our new coach? Uh, thank you very much, Dela. I think it's welcoming news for us to have Chris Hilton as our main man. We know what he's done. He has the good reputation. We've known him to do so well when it comes to building teams and sustaining it to a certain level. What I'm looking for is that there are so many controversies around this team. I want him to put to bed so many things with regards to player call-ups, with regards to selections, with regards to who becomes the leader or the next captain. If he gets that done, Dalla, I think he's a good tactician and he won't suffer any loss or controversies again. Okay, so, I mean, you, you gather from the three people that were spoken to um, already that a lot is expected from Chris Hilton. Many feel that he's the right person for the job. Many feel that he's the one to carry Ghana to that promised land of winning um, or our next in our next Nations Cup again. After so many years, after decades of not winning it, many feel that it is the time, this is the right time. So a lot is expected from Chris Hilton. As I said earlier, judging from those I've spoken to and what they make of Chris Hilton, it tells you that um, they are very, very expectant. And we just hope and pray that he'll be able uh, to live it and uh, we all pray that he'll be able to get his target right, so a... as we speak now Chris Hilton on is on the way coming to the auditorium and so the event is going to start any moment from now there he is in your pictures as the coach of the senior national team the Black Stars so coach Chris Hilton is in here Please, have the show is going to start any moment from now. Please take your seats. So we are live on Joy News on our Joy Prime channel and other social media handles from the. All right, uh, live visuals from Kumasi there. So very, very shortly, we'll be taking you back into that SG Mall Auditorium. Uh, to bring you the live press conference unveiling ceremony of new Black Stars coach Chris Huting. Um, Daniel, briefly, it was very exciting to see the amount of enthusiasm the people are showing for this unveiling. The press conference room, lots of people. Yeah, lots of people. You can understand. Look, Kumasi never disappoints. Uh, we're there at the last Black Stars uh, game in Kumasi, Bavaria, against Nigeria. And obviously, there were more people outside the stadium than <laughs> inside the stadium. It was totally yeah. packed. You could feel the euphoria once you got there. The people of Kumasi loved their football. They yeah. loved their Black Stars. So, and I think it was a very smart thing for the GFA to do, to take it there, just to build that support again. We saw it um, last year by this time when we were going to face Nigeria. And um, it's sort of dwindled down a bit uh, during the World Cup period. But it's, 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 you can clearly see that the people are excited. Once the Black Stars, once there's some positive vibe around the team, um, They've selected the right players. Yeah. People are happy with the squad and they are happy with the head coach. You can tell that um, that feel is coming, that positive feel is coming back. And for them to take this unveiling um, just a couple of days before the game, it just helps build their euphoria to the game. So it's a smart thing for them to do. Clearly, from what we are seeing, people are excited. We hope that uh, the right questions are, are asked. We hope that he answers them well and sort of uh, just gives us satisfying answers just to take us into it. We don't want any controversy to <laughs> the game.
I'm glad you mentioned that because that's what I was going to ask Henry. Uh, sorry, I was going to ask Gary. If you're Henry, <laughs> you're coaching Chris Hughes, I want to say to make Ghanaians happy, what would you be telling him? Well, um, I'd ask him to thank the, the good people of Kumasi. <laughs> yeah. Essential. Very, very important. <laughs> um, for the world. I have to mention your two first things. The secret to a successful event in Kumasi is praise Kumasi people. Praise O24, <laughs> you know, like those things are essential tools. Exactly, exactly. You know, exactly. appreciate them. And you have to show them that you belong. You're one of them. Yeah, yeah. so if it were a three-course meal, that would be the starter. You know what yes. I'm saying? <laughs> um, so make sure you thank the people there and then say that you would dearly wish that they would extend that welcome to the pitch on Thursday. Yeah. You know, so you know that the GFA have done an incredible job together with the National Sports Authority to make sure that the pitch, you've seen the pitch, you like it. Yeah. It's in just the right shape. The players are coming as well for you. The players are coming for you. This is the first time most of you will see the players live since the World Cup. And um, we are sorry that things didn't go well during the World very Cup. Essential. Very essential. You know, we didn't go well during the World Cup. Apology, very important. But we are, you know, it's a young team. You know, a lot of these guys are kids, it's their first time. And so let's start building together, <laughs> you know. And, um, and you need to pick up their pedigree. You pick up, yeah. There's no blasters without Kumasi. Exactly. Very important. <laughs> so if I'm Henry, I'll, I'll give them one or two things that, oh, um, you know, my father, my late father is Ghanaian. I went to bury him last week to get a sympathy vote. Emotional. Yeah. Do some small. Go, go for the job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tell them that, oh, last week was the when you buried your father. It's important. Say you were, the right thing. You were thinking, while burying your father, you yeah. were thinking about Kumasi people, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and how your father would have loved to be in Kumasi. Yeah. And the way you were received when you arrived yesterday. Yeah, it made you emotional. Oh, you wish your father were oh, there. Oh, God. You know, oh, God. You know <laughs> then, <laughs> then, then you, you take That's your handkerchief and cry small. <laughs> I'm already so I'm you know, so good. You, cry, you, do, you know, you, nice pause, you pause for effects and then you do cool. like this. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then you dedicate the game to your late father. You dedicate the game. Coach to one. Tell them, anybody who has ever lost a parent, this match is for it's you. For you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Coach, no size. <laughs> you know, then, oh, after that, then after that, you come and thank the GFA themselves. Yes. You know, thank the National Sports Authority, mm -hmm. Ghanaians in general, for the warm reception that you've got. Yep. And then, I mean, the players themselves, you speak to them directly that, look, you know that this, this assignment is not easy. Yep. Ghanaians have been disappointed for a long time. Mm -hmm. You are going to treat it with all seriousness. You know, you are going to be a full-time coach. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, understand? One of us. Yeah, I, I'm one of you. I'm yeah, going yeah. to be a full time coach. I'm going to be here. And then I am, um, yeah, yeah. Help our league grow. Yeah, and then the final thing. Yes. When you finish, if I'm Henry, I'll, I'll teach him one or two, three, a, you know, That's I can't. True. You say some That's wild true. sentence in three. No, 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 no. You see, you, know, you, you teach him the right one. Says uh, flo you let him practice from the time he's coming from the goal. Uh, say it correctly. Yeah, say it correctly. That's say it because that's what they'll play on the on the, on the commercial radio station. Uh, TRS pet. <laughs> Harry's job is under threat. <laughs> anyway, so. uh, any moment from now, we'll be taking you across to the SG Mall press conference room where that uh, unveiling ceremony of Black Stars head coach Chris Hutting is just about to begin. You are, you are a Kumasi guy. You just SG Mall. What's, what's SG Mall is what? Yeah, it's like KUST. It's, at the, it's, a, it's a new mall. Oh, right. If you like. Yeah. They have a press conference room. Yeah. In the mall. But you saw it. Wow. Yeah. It's, nice. It's, it's, more, yeah. it's been a while since I've been to KUST. I'm moving forward. That's the problem. He finished, he went to school in Kumasi. Yeah, but when... I only knew one... He only knew KUST. The campus. enclave. That's what I'm saying. That's he, all. he was in school with me. Ah, I right. wasn't in school. No, but so how you you know everything, eh? <laughs> but I've seen your CV. <laughs> you said you went to school in KUSC. Okay, you feel like that? You lied to all of us. You were sleeping in my room. <laughs> <laughs> when he was at KUSC, he had the name I had some. Are you kidding me? Ah, there's so many things about this boy you don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> we'll, 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 find, we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. And then, if I, <laughs> anyway, That's a, all yeah. right. Uh, now let's uh, let's get back on track and talk about Chris Hutting a little bit more um, while we wait to connect to our visuals in Kumasi. Um, Daniel, Chris Hutting at 64. There, I have seen in certain quarters people that say 
you know what, he doesn't really have anything to prove anymore. Mm. Why should we feel that he will be motivated at this point? Because he pretty much, it seems like he's done everything. <laughs> I don't think he's done everything. I don't think he feels he's done everything. And, you know, he's wanted this job for a while now. Yeah. He's wanted this job. And it just shows me a determination of a man who, he, he wants to succeed. Look, club management is different from national team management. And, and coaches think like that. The fact that he's been successful of, um, in club management doesn't necessarily mean that he's satisfied and he's done it all. He wants to prove himself also at the national team um, job and level. And look, he's, when I say he's wanted this job for a while, he could easily have given up when the yeah. job was given to Otwadu. He didn't have to serve as technical advisor. You get me? But he's still stuck there. He, he, he worked at now Otwadu and now his chance has come. I think he's highly motivated for this job and I think he's very capable. The only thing that... I the only thing that I, 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 I'm sort of a bit skeptical about is his style of play. But we'll talk right, about style that. style of play. Uh, we'll talk about that. But we have <coughs> officials now. We can cross over to Kumasi to bring you that live press conference. Uh, after that, we'll be back here. Enjoy. Masudi Dramani and George Boatin were with him during the, the World Cup in Qatar. They were assisting Otto Ado and Chris was also in the role as the technical advisor, but today he took over as the head coach of the team. Now, for the first time, the head coach and his two assistants will have their co contracts running concurrently. What it means is that the contract that Mr. Chris Hilton has signed, his two assistants have both signed the same contract which would run until December 31, 2024. The two parties have agreed that the terms of this contract shall be subject to a performance review. Obviously, we know we are on a good call, so once we come to the end of the contract in December 2024, That the FA determines would depend on the what he wants to do. is signed till December 2024. Uh, that is almost two years, a year and nine months, I believe, is what it is from now till December 2024. So, um, Daniel, that's an interesting one. Uh, you were very keen about the duration, um, but uh, your thoughts on that? Um, look. Right, okay. Let's go back to Kumasi right now. But anytime he wants to travel, he will be given the needed support or provided with the needed support to do so. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the various areas where we think the public must know at this moment. Before I invite your questions, I would ask Chris Hilton to tell us about his emotions and how he feels going into the future. Chris, congratulations. Kumasi is all ears. Um, firstly, um, thank you all very much for coming this morning. Um, regarding my uh, emotions, of course I've been uh, involved with the association and involved with the team uh, for, um, for almost a year now. Although that is in a, a different capacity as technical advisor, what that has allowed me to do is to uh, get a good feel for the squad to build up relationships with those in um, the association and for those around the association. So I think that's allowed me to get a little bit of what we call a head start. Um, but as regards my emotions, uh, as most of you know, the large majority of my managerial career has been at uh, club level. Um, so, and also as a player, for those that know, 
me would know that I represented the Republic of Ireland as a player. So to represent Ghana and the Black Stars as the head coach is something that I'm incredibly proud of. Um, yeah, sorry about the noise. Um, it's something that I'm inc incredibly proud of. It's something that I will give uh, everything um, to make the team as successful as possible. Um, it's something that I will do to make sure that, that the communication and the relationship that I have with this association, for those around the association, uh, and of course the supporters, uh, to give all of my best. So it's something that I'm hugely looking forward to, uh, but very much our game is about support. And as I said, support from the association, uh, but mostly the support from uh, the huge array of fans that we have. And that starts with, obviously, a very difficult game at, uh, at uh, Kumasi on, uh, on Thursday. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chris. Colleague journalist, your questions are welcome. Um, Frank Nero will coordinate that you raise your hand. You'll be given the microphone. you mention your name, your station, and then your question. Thank you. Hello, coach. My name is Evan Sofochu. I work with CTFM, CTTV. My question is two. One, what sort of black stars or, or brand of football are we to expect from your black stars? Two, you've been around the team for a year now. Uh, what's your response to allegations of interference? in the technical team's work from the GFV hierarchy. Thank you. Okay, so on the, uh, on the second question first, um, uh, all I can say is, is that um, I am the new uh, head coach, so um, anything that you speak of um, before my time here, <laughs> is very much um, something that you you are bringing up and is in the past. All I can speak about is my um, communication uh, and correspondence that I had with the association in my time being involved so far. Um, and I can only speak highly of that lines of communication and correspondence and the support that I've had from, from the association. So this is one that I think is it's hugely important because for the Black Stars to do well and achieve what we want to achieve, this is about mostly about the players and the players performing, but it's about the technical staff, it's about the supporters around, but it's, it's also very much about the support from the association. And um, it's, it's very difficult to go in the direction you want to if you don't have all of them things in a, aligned. And I can only speak of my experiences so far. And I said the, the, the communication that I've had with the association has been, has been very good. As regards what type of team we will see, what we want to see, we want to see a winning team. Because there, there can be and there will be lots of questions on a style of football, players that play, why is this player not playing and why is this player playing? Um, are you too defensive? Are you too offensive? Uh, ultimately, what we all want to see is winning football. And, um, and that starts with the correct preparation of the team, using the players to the best of their ability, and picking a team that suits the type of players that, that we have. So I think we all, as coaches, start on the same level, same starting point. And the starting point is to put together a group of players to play as a team and to win football matches. Okay. Next question. Thank you so much. I'm a free pure FM. Um, on the 19th of March, 1982, Ghana won against Libya. So that's about 41 years ago. We've had 33 coaches since 82. You are the 34th coach, Mr. Houston, Mr. Hilton. What, what, 
what capacity or what capabilities makes you ideal for this very demanding job? Number two, you were the technical advisor for the stars. You talked about your association and all of that. Will you describe yourself as, would you describe that thing, that advice role or consultancy role as a failure, or you think you were successful? And finally, how would your coaches or your coaching staff and your players describe you as a coach? How would they describe you? Probably suggest that we keep our questions short and probably one question per person so that um, the rest could also get a chance and ask their questions. Thank you, uh, Kwabena Obin Efri, uh, for your question. Um, oh yeah, would Henry, do we take the questions or he responds? Yes. Okay, go ahead with the response, coach. Yes, if, if, you're, if you're asking me, firstly, uh, why I, I am in this role, and the, the obvious answer to this one is because the Football Association of Ghana asked if I would do this role, and after, uh, if, whether I would be interested in being the next head coach. Um, it's a role that I didn't hesitate to accept. Um, as regards my capabilities for this role, um, I've been in football for a long time. Um, not only as a head coach, but also as an assistant coach. I was an assistant coach for some 14 and a half years before I was a head coach. Um, then went on to be a head coach and for those that know my career as a head coach, that has been um, in the Championship in England, but also managed three teams in the Premier League in, in England. So I think my standing and credentials as a coach of coaching at a good level, I, I think is good. You know, everybody has different opinions. The, the difference, of course, is managing or coaching at international level and, um, and club level and of course there is a difference you know the the preparation time is less um, of course at club level you have the players day in and day out to be able to develop a team but this is international football so every coach or every manager in international football uh, has the same difficulties and we have to get around them what I have is, I say, a lot of experience as, as a head coach and I will have to use all of them experiences to determine the way forward for the team, the, to pick the team, to pick the squad, the tactics of the team. These are things that I'm used to. Uh, and, also, and also adjusting, adjusting to a less period of preparation. You know, we, we had players that played yesterday. So in effect, we'll train on Tuesday, we'll train on Wednesday and play a game on Thursday. So these are the things that I would like to think that my years in experience have uh, allowed me to do. As regards my role as, uh, as technical advisor, then my role predominantly was to support the technical staff, to be a sounding board for the technical staff and the head coach um, and I think overall there were disappointments in the World Cup there's, there's, there's no doubt about that but I think we had I think we had a lot of pluses you, you, you have to always break it down and you have to look at the games one by one and I think out of the, the three games obviously the, the biggest disappointment was was losing against Uruguay and, and the manner in which we exited but I think most people would, would have looked at the Portuguese game with the quality that they have. They're standing in world football and the, the South Korea game with, I think, far more positives. So you have to break it down and that's exactly what I have to do. All right, thank you very much. Um, let me take the lady. I've taken some two ge gentlemen. Please take the mic. Good morning, my name is Betty Yosin. I work with GH1 TV and congratulations to you, um, Coach Chris. Now, my question is, you know Ghanaian football fanatics, they are very impatient and 
they have been thirsty for trophy for a very long time. What would you describe as a success in your time with the Black Stars or a failure if you are unable to achieve? Um, I think what you do is that you, you always have to judge what you think and what you perceive as success and failure um, nearer to the time. And you also have to remember that uh, what is deemed a success and failure is different to different people. My responsibilities are, and what we have to remember is that, that I have the responsibilities to, um, if I look at the, the present squad that we have, remember we went into a World Cup campaign with the youngest squad in the World Cup. So my, my balances are, my balances are on bringing these young players through and also making sure that the experienced players that, that we, we have in the, in the squad can be a good combination. So it is, it's always going to be a mix of, of what is the most important thing. And the most important thing is always here and now. We have two games, two games this week, and this is what the most important thing is. But I also have to have an eye on development. And I think I would be judged on a way a team play, uh, what I've made from the players that we have, whether I've got I've been managed managed to get the best out of the players that, that we have, and have a support, and this is the most imp important thing, that have a support that enjoy seeing their team play. Now, what is judged as success and failure will be perceived in different ways. Ultimately, at this moment, it's about winning two games this week. It's about qualification in, uh, to get to AFCON. And it's doing and, pre and preparing the team as well as we can from AFCON and performing the best that we can in an AFCON tournament. And uh, it's normal. It's normal that you will be judged on that. All right, thank you. Okay. I think he deserved my attention. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Um, Coach, once again, congratulations on your appointment. Um, in your opening statements, you indicated that your time, you know, with the team for the Nigerian game and then the World Cup allowed you to know the squad and then the technical staff as well. My question is, is that the reason why you didn't really tweak the squad? You've kept a significant number of them in your squad for the Angola double header. And then knowing the squad is a different thing, but knowing the expectation of the country is also a different thing. How does the Nigeria game, especially in Kumasi, and the atmosphere, you know, compare? I know you've played in some big stadia, you've played, uh, managed some big teams on Tan side. It's a very, very mad football city. How does that pressure, especially in games in Kumase, compare to what you've had experience as a player and then a manager? Okay, so, so firstly I'll speak about the squad itself. Um, I think in my, in my time I've been involved and uh, I looked at this uh, very roughly this morning. There, there have been a lot of new players that have come into the squad. So if I think of the dynamics of the team and when I pick, pick the squad is to, to try to incorporate the best I can with the new players that have come into the squad and of course the existing squad members. I can only ever pick 25 players and I think most of you would know that um, you know, we have some injuries. So some players that have come into the squad that wasn't in the initial squad. Um, but it's that balance, and what, what, what I didn't want to do was, um, because what I can do is that if I'm looking at the amount of talent that we have out there, you know, I potentially could have brought in, you know, another new three, four, five players that have not been involved in my period of time. But we have to have some consistency in the squad. And... Um, we spoke about 
going out of a World Cup in, in the last game. But this is, we have to remember, this is a team. This is a team that got to the World Cup when there were numerous very, very good teams, African teams, that didn't get there. So the starting position is good. Um, and so with the introduction of a lot of new players in my period of time here, I have to look for some type of consistency in the squad. Um, the game in Kromasa, yes, and I think it, it was difficult for me, it's my first time, my first time in Kromasa, my first time at a game. And I think when you're there, around that type of atmosphere, it's difficult for it not to affect you. And it does, how vibrant it was, the build up to the game, the intensity of the, the game itself, but the intensity of our crowd. And, uh, and I have no doubt that the, of the, the influence that the crowd played on the team and the head coach. So this is something that's always important for us. And you are right, I've played in big stadiums before and uh, big atmospheres before. And you are always reliant on that atmosphere to get behind the team. And it does make a difference. So certainly as regards what I saw there, Yes, it was, it was something that was wonderful for me to see and something that uh, I, to this day, remember. All right, okay. All right, thank you very much. My name is Stephen Zandu. I work at Lab FM and Isha FM of the Multimedia Group Limited. Congrats, Chris, once again, and I wish you well. In your short stint with Ghana Football as technical advisor of the Black Stars, what have you made of local football? I'm talking about the Ghana Premier League. And what is the possibility that going forward, we have some of the players playing the Ghana Premier League featuring in your future call-ups? Thank you very much. Um, firstly, um, uh, what, what I can tell you is from the day that I've been involved with the association, which is, I say, about one year ago, um, I was m made aware and stressed upon how important, how important the local game is to the association and to us as technical staff. So this I am very conscious of and of course in my period of time so far we have had some players that have made the squad okay, from our local game. Um, so I certainly will not underestimate it. Where, where I think I can add value in in my new role is that, you know, I will be spending more time in Ghana. I will be watching more games, I will be attending more clubs and getting to know the league far better than I was perhaps given the opportunity to before. And the only reason I wasn't before is because our concentrations very much were on a World Cup campaign. Uh, but I, I am constantly being made aware of players that are doing well. Of course, the, the league structure and the teams that, that are doing well. And certainly, in my new role as head coach, I will be paying very much attention to um, not only the players that are doing well, but the game here in general, because I think it is important. I think it's important that any national team has a good national league. And um, I will do my very best to make sure that I see as much football here as possible. Uh, coach, congrats on your appointment. Sorry for the loss of your father. My name is Richard Echampo. I work with Akuma FM and the Media General. Coach, short questions. Baba Idrisu was a constant member of this team until unfortunately he got injured and missed the World Cup. He's recovered, he's playing, he was out of your squad. Any special reasons why Baba Ijisu missed out on the call-up? Then, what can you do to help, as in coaching, you are the head of our, our national team, A. Do you have any responsibilities to help the other national teams or to even help coaches in general in Ghana? Finally, as I said, you lost your father, sorry. How important was your father to your coaching career and is there going to be any effect once he's gone? 
Um, firstly, um, thank you very much for your condolences. Um, my uh, father played a, a very big part of my my life. Um, when my uh, I can tell you now, when my father came to England, he he wasn't um, a fanatical football supporter. He wasn't, and he probably grew more knowledgeable uh, as he got older because it wasn't only myself that was a professional footballer, also my brother. So he, he grew more knowledgeable. I think that our development as young players um, wouldn't have been through, through my dad. He was a, a very supportive dad, but he, as I said, particularly in the early years, wasn't so much of a, a football fanatic, but that he grew on. So mostly with my dad, it's about the support network that he's always given me. So as, uh, in general, um, as opposed to just in football. As regards uh, Baba Drissu, the, um, uh, as with so many players in the squad, you have decisions to make, so many. And um, for uh, Baba Drissu, we could speak about probably another five, six, seven players that I had to consider closely before making the decision. So, you know, 25 players in a squad will all be, will all be my own personal decisions. And they can be tight decisions, a, wa a way of playing. One player is a little bit different, has some different qualities to a different player. Uh, the mix in the squad, if I'm looking at players that we, that we have in the squad, who will be a correct mix to somebody that perhaps we would be playing in a similar type position to them. So these are all very, very tough decisions. And I can tell you, this was, this was a tough decision. Um, but as I said, I can only pick 25 players and there, there are players that will miss out. Yes, I mean, in my, um, you know, what, what, I, what I have to do in my time here is I've already spoken about trying to attend as many games as I can from the, the local leagues. Um, also, th throughout the FA, we have the different age group teams, also the ladies teams, the, and I think we all know the prominence now of the, of the ladies game, ladies football. So yeah, I will try to do as much as I can. It's, it will always be about getting the correct balance. You know, we have, we have a huge number of the squad that play in Europe. So it, for me, it will be about getting the correct balance between opportunities to, of course, see players that are playing in Europe, but also players that are playing here in our, in our local teams and, of course, our other international teams. So, in the period of time that I hear, I will try to do as much work as I can. Good morning, Chris, and uh, also accept my condolences. I'm sitting down here so that, yeah, uh, my condolences. Um, an opportunity for you this afternoon to see a local game. Um, there's a Ghana Premier League game between Kim Faisal and BBNE Gold Stars at Abraham Kessi. I'm sure the communications director will bring you there to watch and see the level of football on the domestic front, which will give you a good uh, perspective of the barrier or the gap between the local league and, of course, the level you're looking at at the Black Stars. And then also, Chris Hewton's legacy, your fingerprints, your footprints. You know, when we talk about managers, you always say that this is his style. That is, you know, that is how we know Zidane or Ancelotti or any national team coach. Chris Hewton, how would you describe yourself and what kind of legacy uh, would you leave for the Black Stars in a few years' time when you've won a few trophies, hopefully? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So on the, the first question, um, I am aware of the game today. Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to attend. For uh, those that know, I was here in Kumasi for most of the day yesterday. 
uh, in a very, um, very busy international period. We have players that have arrived that will train today and we have players that will arrive tomorrow. So I think certainly it's a game that I would like to attend to and if the circumstances were different and I had more time then certainly um, I would attend. And But at this moment having spent so much time away from the home base yesterday and this morning then I need to be back for the training group um, the, uh, this afternoon. Um, as regards the legacy, um, it's, it's always a, uh, a very difficult question because, you know, what I am conscious of is results and I'm very conscious of in the media, supporters, fans, it's everything's the same. You win games, you're good, you lose games, you're not so good. Is these are the things that will never ever change so you know a legacy is about a way of playing I understand the type of players that we we have in the team and I think we have a lot of technically talented players in the team but I'm also conscious of what the supporters want most is to win football matches and you you have to go about your tactics in a different way to when you are playing one of the top teams than when you are not playing one of the top teams. So a legacy uh, would be, I hope, that, um, that um, Chris came in for whatever period that is, was seen to work as hard as he can to make sure that a Black Stars team with good, quality, talented players achieve the best that they can achieve. Okay, um, congratulations coach. My name is Obede Champon. I work with Silver FM. Well, um, we've been having a lot of conversations, but we all know you are going to be involved in so many call-ups. Um, can you help us, the media, uh, with regards to the five bases your call-ups will depend on? Whether it's going to be based on experience, whether it's going to be on form, whether it will be based on discipline, like the five metrics that you are going to use, or even if it's more all the metrics you'll be using in your various call-ups. And again, um, we've not won a trophy. My brother will be asked about that question. Um, should Ghanaians expect a trophy from you at the end of the period? Can you, can you promise us that? Or you wait, we should just go with the flow. You are just going to build a team. And if we win a trophy or not, we, have, we, should, be, we should be okay with that. I'll, I'll go backwards and I'll start with the, the second question. Um, you know, one thing I could tell you is there is, there is not one coach, head coach or manager that would, that would sit up here and guarantee a trophy. There is not one because we cannot guarantee anything. What we can guarantee is that we will work as hard as we can to put a team together to create the right tactics, the right mentality, the right personnel to put ourselves in the best position to do that. And that, firstly, that comes with qualification. So we will work as hard as we can. But I think you probably would appreciate it's there isn't anybody that can guarantee anything because there are certain things that always change things. And as regards the metrics, um, there are so many, you know, you've spoke about five, there, there isn't five, we, it, there is a thought process, there is a thought process that goes into every squad and sometimes, sometimes that thought process gets thrown out the window when you have three or four players that are injured and you have to adjust and sometimes you, you might have to adjust them same players with different type players and then you have to adjust around there. Uh, international football is, is, is all about compromise when you're picking the squad. It's, it's, it's always about adjusting what you have to the way that you want to play. So what you try to do is you, you try to have different types of players. So in your own head, what do you want? Do you want, you know, do you want an attacking style of play with attacking fullbacks? Do you, what do you, do you want to employ in midfield? Do you want 
defensive type midfield attack and you have to work the, 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 the individual players around the type of squad that you want um, but also that right balance between young players like we have and experienced heads so it's very difficult to talk about metrics because it changes it changes all the time all I can tell you is that, that any head coach any head coach would have put more work would have put more work into the thought process that goes on when you are picking a squad uh, my name is Sally Sunny um, Husky Radio one major challenge we had in our we have in our football currently in Ghana is transitioning you know, from the juvenile side to the senior side a lot of the young players we have in the national team currently are players who either played in the academies in Europe or um, just played outside the country we have had young promising talents in Ghana who are nowhere to be found now in the national team so what are you going to do are you going to set up um, a mini team for just looking at the transitioning of the players from the under 17 to maybe the under 20 to the um, black star because of late um, I think that is the major problem we have yes okay so I, I understand the question you are you are talking about a process and you're talking about a development process so I'll answer the question um, first and then um, I'll go back to it um, first you have to look at there are also players that have come through the system and have developed very well and are very prominent in the Black Stars senior team so um, for what you are saying for something that hasn't happened um, in a lot of occasions it has happened you know I think we are a squad that have had to say young players that have come through the system uh, also for what you're saying you know this is this is nothing new you know this this can this would be the exactly the same at club level you know there are so many good young talents and not all of them not all of them can develop the way that you would like to the game can only hold so many players the team can only have 11 players a squad can only have 25 so for for those for those that the young talented promising ones that didn't develop sometimes there is also that young player that perhaps wasn't the level of the others and makes great progress and sometimes they're the ones that you you value more that you didn't expect to get to the position that they have and they have and there are many examples of that um, as regards the process uh, I said I, I will work as, as hard as I can to determine the young players that we have here most of them we would have on our files anyway but um, to determine the ones that we have here uh, and look at the, the processes for their development so I said I said I will work as hard as I can on this one but you'll be surprised that you know there, there would be far more that have come through a system and developed well than perhaps what you think congratulations coach um, my name is Sally Ujara I work with Focus FM uh, my question is Thomas Pate has been one of the integral members of this squad but a lot of Ghanaians thought he has not living up to expectation compared to his performance at the club side what do you make of that and again you are the new man in the dugouts going forward are we going to see the best of Thomas Pate thank you very much um, but I think for, firstly I am here as the the new head coach and um, uh, what you are saying about Thomas is something that you um, are thinking your thoughts are uh, very much um, what's happened before but I can give you my comments on, on Thomas um, I think he's a, a wonderful player a wonderful footballer that's playing in an Arsenal team at the moment and he's playing a huge part in their success at the moment 
But Thomas's role, Thomas is, is what we regard in the game as a continuity player. You know, he's not going to be that player, that exciting player that's going to dribble past somebody and, uh, and score a goal or run down the flank, beat somebody, get a crossing. But Thomas's role has always been hugely important to the managers to pick him. And this is why, at international level and at club level, he has always been in the teams because of his value to the team. And sometimes, sometimes that type of player, his value for what we see in the team and what we see as coaches, sometimes he's not seen outside because of the particular role that they play. They are hugely important to the team, to the coach, to uh, getting good performances and winning football matches. And um, we all appreciate him, as would every manager that's played, that has played him. We're taking the last three questions. Okay, you are one, two, and three. Yeah, hi coach, welcome to Kumase. I'm Michael Asayabudu, Sompa FM, Sompa TV. We, we saw pictures and videos of you partaking the Akwesidae celebrations yesterday. Now, for someone who is quite alien to our culture, our traditions, and also to our football culture, how well essential will it be for you to fully immerse in the various subculture and then the grand football culture that Ghana has? And then two, are you going to set time frames for us to know exactly where you've got into as regards this particular Blasters project? So, um, uh, uh, firstly, it was a, a huge honour for me to be there yesterday. Um, it's quite obvious what the occasion and what the day meant to everybody there. And I was um, hugely honoured and excited to, to be there. And hence, in uh, what was an important preparation day tomorrow, it was important for me to be there personally it was important for, for the association to stress that it was important for me to to be there also um, you know I, I can tell you I, I was brought up in England uh, with a Ghanaian father and brought up in a very English culture and it's it's only in as I progressed in years that I got to learn far more about my background, my heritage, the culture, uh, and everything. And it's, it's something that has, um, has been a, a huge benefit to my life and my family's life in general. So I'm, the, I'm excited by the prospect of being here, experiencing the culture that we, that we have here. Um, but ultimately also, the most important reason I'm here is to lead the Black Stars to success in games and this has to take the biggest priority and will do um, and as regards the steps um, uh, in this role there are so many things to do and we've spoken about a lot of the things even this morning a lot of the things that I would like to do we'll have time to do um, what I will do is I will get our organisational instruction in time periods the best way that I can but remember it's still it's still about the team it's still about watching the local players attending matches speaking to the local coaches and and also being involved with our other national teams so that's quite a lot you know and I intend to do as, as much as I can and as regards time scales I will do the best that I can. I will always report back to the association as regards the games that we played and the progress that we made and, uh, and anything else that's around my role. And that will be my responsibility to the association. Steve Manfred, I'm um, with Love and Asia and Multimedia Group. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, at the World Cup, largely we played between a three-back, four-back sometimes. There were a lot of Ghanaians who felt that we have a lot more quality 
to play with a, with a free flowing, that's the general phrase over here, attacking football. Um, you have been described as tactically flexible. In an interview with Coach's Voice, you mentioned your 4 4 1 1, 4 2 3 1, and the likes. What do you think is the best set of structure that fits the team on and off the ball? Again, to specifics again, Mohamed Kudus is a player that a lot of tacticals feel that he's a progressive midfielder. But again, at Ajax Amsterdam, we've seen that at the final third, he has a lot of goals and assists. And people feel that between himself and Victor Osinyeme, these are two of the best African strikers on, in Europe right now. Do you think Mohamed Kudus should be playing in deep line areas with his progressive carries and his press resistance abilities, or he needs to be at the top? And then finally, with everything that you have said and your tax, do you think the 21 months that has been given to you by the association is enough to get this job done? Thank you. Okay, so just as regards um, tactically and, and uh, how I would set the team up, um, certainly as a, um, as a coach, you have to have that flexibility. You know, we, we can talk about being flexible as coaches and wanting to play in different systems and trying to get the correct players into that system, but it's also about the opposition, the quality of the opposition, and what you are allowed to do. So you have to be, as a coach, you have to be flexible enough for this. You know, I already spoke this morning that, you know, the tactics can be different for when you are playing a top, top ranked team to a team that's not. Uh, ultimately, it's about trying to use the players in your squad to the best of their abilities fitting into a system and this is always the hardest part because remember at international level you will be taking players that play in different systems at their clubs play in different positions at their clubs so you have a very short period of time generally you have a system and a structure that you want to play and you try to work the players around that Generally, that's the, the best way to do it because, because otherwise there are too many players playing in positions that maybe they're not used to playing. As regards uh, Mohamed uh, Kudas, he's still a developing player. And wh what I think we are lucky with Kudas is that he is a player that can play in numerous positions. So for for anybody, everybody here will have a different opinion on his best position. You also have to look at his club. His club are the team, the coach, the assistant coaches that have him every day. Every day in the training, every week or twice a week in games. So they would know Kudos better than anybody. And what's Ajax have done, they've played him in a few positions. At this moment, he's playing on the, on the right-hand side. For me, it's about just trying to get the right balance and trying to get the, the best out of players in whichever position. Because one thing that's general is that sometimes there'll be a player playing for the Black Stars or any international team that may be playing a slightly different position for their clubs. Ah, as, as, um, as regards the, the, yeah, the, the duration of, of my uh, contract, I have to get that right balance. I have to get that right balance of what is short term, what is medium term, and what is long term. At this moment, always the most important thing is short term. Winning football matches that will get you into a better position for when the other games come round. The, the medium term, of course, is making sure that you qualify and do well in the competitions itself. The longer term, of course, is about developing players and bringing players, like you've said, through the system. And, and that takes time. So th th there is no doubt, as a team that played in the World Cup, as the youngest team, is that 
we have to have an eye on development. And development can take time. And sometimes this is where you need that little bit of patience from the likes of yourselves, the journalists, the supporters, and, and our right messages. Um, so I think probably the, the, the length of my um, contract is, I think, the correct length. Um, and we know that on, the, uh, on that pathway, if we are heading in the right direction, then of course, come the end of that contract, there will be talks again at the end of that contract. Uh, yes, good morning. Um, Coach, my name is Jojo Addison, as you inquire from under Tinka Media Village. Um, there have been rumors around as to who takes care of the goalkeeping aspect of your team. I would like to know if you could confirm to us, um, or otherwise, if Richard Kingston is still um, the goalkeeper's trainer for the Black Stars. Um, I will take that. That's the responsibility of the Football Association. What I can announce here is that we haven't made any technical change to the team that assembled, that uh, represented us at the, the World Cup. George Boatin and Didi Dramani are still the assistant coaches. Richard Kingston remains the goalkeeper's trainer. There have been some additions um, in other um, specific departments, but as regards Richard, Didi, and George, there is no change. Thank you. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, it's obvious that we can exhaust all the questions. I know colleagues still have more questions to ask. So, okay, Della will take the last one, Mr. Atiasi, for uh, I'm considering your age. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Delali Atiasi from Love FM. Um, Henry, when you started, we didn't hear you talk about targets. May we know specifically what targets has been set for the coach? Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I'll, um, I'll answer that question. Um, I, I think as regards, as regards targets, um, this is normal. What is normal is, firstly, as a coach, you do the best job that you can. What is normal from your employees is that they want success. This is normal, whether it be our association, any other association, or football club. You want success. So what is success for us is to do and put ourselves in, in the best possible position to do as well as we can in an AFCON competition. And this means going to and going to an AFCON final and performing the best that we can and putting ourselves in the best position to win it. This is normal. I think as a coach and as a group of players, you want to win things. We are in a competition that's, that's, that has big competition and a lot of good teams. The, the African Cup of Nations is a, a competition that I think has, has got stronger and better with each every competition. But we have to want to put ourselves in a, in a position where we can compete where we can compete with what we think are the best teams and to put ourselves in the best possible position to do well in a competition. Ultimately, everybody wants to win a trophy and we are no different to that as somebody alluded to. I think Henry will take the last word, if maybe a closing remarks or something. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for spending your morning with us. The Football Association greatly appreciates your time. Let me run by you what has been put in place as regards the team's um, arrival and our schedule in Kumasi. Hopefully, the team will arrive tomorrow afternoon around 1 p.m. Is that right? 
Um, we will have our first training in Kumasi at the Babaya Raste Sports Stadium in the afternoon after lunch. And then the official training before the match, which is normally called match day minus one, will take place on Wednesday. And then the game is at 4 p.m. on Thursday. Coach Chris Hilton will speak to the press in a pre-match press conference on Wednesday. So we will communicate the time. As usual, the venue will be at the Babaya Ross Post. So we'll communicate the time tomorrow so that you can be fully aware of that. So we are grateful for your time. Once again, thanks for your company. And see you on Thursday. All right, thank you. All right, welcome back. So you heard Chris Hewton there. He's unveiling lots of issues to unpack, but a few highlights. His contract is until December 2024. So basically a two-year contract, if you're being specific, 21 months, I believe. Um, he was asked crucially about interference. He says he can speak to what happened in the past. Now he's the head coach. And he's in charge. He will make his own decisions. He was asked about the local league. He says he will spend as much time as possible to watch as much local football as possible because it is essential that our local league is doing well. And he would consider players who are doing well there for the national teams. He was asked about style. What style of football is he bringing to the Black Stars? Uh, he says he doesn't care about style. Offensive, defensive. As long as he's winning, that is the most important thing. Winning, that is the most essential thing. He was asked about targets, of course, and uh, whether he's emotionally ready, uh, considering the fact that he only buried his father a few, a, few, uh, a few days ago. So there's a lot to unpack as far as this is concerned, but we'll take a very short break. When we come back, I've got Gary Al Smith and... Daniel Kranting in studio with me to look at some of the things, the key highlights from Chris Hutchins unveiling. Welcome back. We're on the last leg of our coverage of the unveiling of Black Stars coach Chris Hutchins, who has signed a contract until December 2024 to be in charge of the Black Stars. His first task will be that game against Angola on Thursday at the Babaya Sports Stadium at 4 p.m. It's a, uh, an Africa Cup of Nations qualifier. It's the third of six matches that Ghana will be playing. And it's a double header. After the game on Thursday, Ghana will make the trip to Angola, Luanda, uh, to play the Angolans or uh, Palancas Negras on Monday as well uh, before wrapping up the qualification with games against Central African Republic and Madagascar. The Black Stars, of course, have four points from two games. A victory against Madagascar and a draw against the Central African Republic is how they've started their qualifying campaign. The top two teams in each group will make the tournament to be hosted in Cote d'Ivoire in January next year. Gary L. Smith and uh, Daniel Kranting are here with me. Um, uh, as we look back at that particular unveiling, um, Daniel, let me come to you. What stood out for you? Because it was quite long. It was a lot. Chris Heating was asked a lot of questions. To be fair, a lot of them very good questions. Um, his response is quite good as well. But what stood out for you? Um, two things. First of all, the length of the contract. I am happy. The only thing that confuses me is December 2024, it ends. But January 2025 is the next Afcon after that's true. Cote d'Ivoire. So that's where I'm a bit confused about. But aside that, um, what he means is that he's taking us through three important blocks. That is the rest of this qualifiers for uh, 2024. He's taking us to the 2024 Afcon as if we qualify. And then he also be part of or be in charge of the qualification process for the next Afcon in 2025. So that's three very important blocks. And that is good enough when it comes to a sustainable uh, building and continuity also. So I'm happy about that. The second one was his answer about his style and his objectives. And he says winning is the most important thing, which I was, I was full of smiles when I, when I heard yeah. that. I was extremely happy. Why? Because it's important for football fans to understand that. And before I say that, it's, a lot of people 
take the same dynamics from club football into into yeah. national team football. But you need to ask yourself a question. If you go back to the teams that have won the major <coughs> competitions around, not just the Afcons, not just the Walkers, Euros, uh, Copa Americas, how many of them have a distinct style? It's pragmatic. The yeah. same team you see in the one, it's a very different style you see in the final. And that is how championships are won, because you have to ap approach it by... Uh, have by to be the, fluid yeah, and adapt. Like fluid, adapt to the opposition that you are facing, which he said. So he's not going to promise like somebody who came and said he would promise a certain style of football. 3-5-2. <laughs> agro football. And we never saw that. Mm. We are taking it game by game and we have to win. That's the objective. The objective is to win. The objective is not to uh, put smiles on people's faces by O's and E's and chances creation. No. It is winning that is the most important thing. And for him, once he's able to get the team with the right balance, a team that understands the system that is going to be used on the day, and can get the result. That is what he wants, and that is for me a fantastic. What did answer. you make of? What did you make of his answers? His, his responses to especially two questions: one, interference, and then, uh, of course, interference in team selection. Let me let me be specific. Mm. And the other one being whether or not he will be present to watch a lot of local football because we've had this issue in the past with national team coaches. Look, um, in terms of the interference, I was happy. It's always important for coaches to be assertive in their answers. Yeah. And he said what has happened in the past. And I think it's a, it. he can't speak to him because he wasn't the one in charge. So I'm sure if anybody was going to interfere, they would go to the boss. And he wasn't the <laughs> boss. So um, for him to say he will be in charge because he's now the boss, that's, so we'll take his word for it. He's, yeah. he's, and he, he's talking on the back of already naming a squad. So for him to say that, it means that we can translate the same thing he's saying to uh, mean what he, what he just did, that's naming the squad. So it means that he probably wasn't influenced in the, yeah. in the latest squad that he, he, he named. And then uh, when it comes to the local football, I think there's a deep-rooted problem when it comes to local football. I felt that was a political answer because Chris Hilton knows that he will not be selected. If he really wants to win something, he knows that he will not be selecting uh, players from the Ghana Premier League. They are not of their level yet, and it's by no fault of theirs. And that's it's a hard truth. It's a hard truth. It's by, by fault of what we've allowed our football to become. And that is a GFA problem. It's a, it's a systemic problem that they need to fix. It's not Chris Hilton's problem. So for him, select the best players available. Uh, don't be swayed by emotions and, and shouts and noise. Yeah. And the best players available are not in the Ghana Premier League, which is fact. So I, I thought it was a political answer. But it really just goes without saying. Goes without saying. Uh, Gary, um, quite a lot, obviously. I, I don't know if you picked out a few highlights. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know me. <laughs> I, I just noticed that the camera was on me while I was... So a few things we've been doing here as well. Um, everything we are doing here is streaming online. Yes. And also we have the quotes, just in case you missed the key highlights. We have them on Sharing our socials, it. on um, Joy Sports, on Twitter and Facebook. And also, I mean, if you are following us personally, we all have it there. And that's what we are doing. These are the things I wrote down in terms of the key highlights. One... Yeah. He said he was going to stay in Ghana, which, which Danny wrote, um, said. Um, that would be really good if he can do it. And uh, knowing Chris Hutton and his track record, he normally is not somebody who says things he does not follow through. So I'll be surprised mm. if he does not do this. And uh, more than that, you know, from a political point of view, if he's seen across around the grounds, that would be really good. Yeah, you know. no, it would be good. And um, he should be ready if he does stay. For people who will say that after going to, to all watch the grounds, all the grounds, he's not called one player. He's not called one player. He went who? He he went who, who one. So that'll be that. <laughs> Two, he said he's going to watch more matches. Yes, um, he says the focus is on the upcoming matches. And he joined that with the contract question where he's talked about the short, medium, and long-term objectives when he was asked about the contract length. The, the phrase that I picked out that you will see on our artworks is, I think the length of my contract is the correct one. Mm. That's what he said. Yeah. Many analysts have said that the 21 months is one because remember, December 2024 is when we are going to have the general election in Ghana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult time politically as well. So people are asking why you, the GFA will put it at that time. But he, the person who has it, says he believes it's the correct one. He has justified it by saying that 
look, this job is about short, medium, and long-term objectives. True. It says that short-term objectives are to win games, yes. starting with a doubleheader this month. And he says, listen. And medium term is to qualify for competition. Yes. Long term is to develop a system. Yes. And he says, we want to win football games, which will put us in a better position to extend the duration of the deal. Yeah. Which means that he wants to earn the medium term contract, which is the two years or three years or four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on this one, I think I'll give it to and the Modern F. football, three years is long term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, he says he thinks the length of his contract is okay. He says his job is also to balance young and old, old players as well. Yeah. He was asked about selection, selection metrics. He said the selection metrics will not be static. That's right. This is vital. It is crucial. Because it is a stick that we journalists first poison the people to use to beat yeah. Black Stars coaches. True. Because we box him into what, I, what is your criteria? And he says it will not be static. Mm -hmm. I have always said and I have been consistent that since I started following national team football, especially the Black Stars, the one example I can give, and I always give people who know, is Richard Kinson. Mm. There was a time in our football life, in the 2000s, when Richard Kinson was our number one goalkeeper. He did not have a club. Yeah. But he was our number one goalkeeper, and if you told any Ghanaian that put anybody apart from Olili in the goal, they would still knew. Yeah. So he says his selection metrics are not static. He was asked two questions that I didn't think, you know, Danny and I were about players, and I thought his answer would be that I'm not going to talk about any players, but Chris Hutton, surprisingly, yeah. tackled them. He was asked about Thomas Partey, sure. and he says, Thomas' role is hugely important because of his value. Yeah. Sometimes, this value that we see as coaches is not what is seen outside, yes. yep. but we all appreciate him. Yeah. That is a very good answer as well. And it was a, a, a thinly veiled... Uh, they, clap back, yeah. if you like, yeah. to the people that claim that he didn't have a good tournament. Yeah, and you see, it, and it cuts across. It's yeah. not just Thomas's rule, but most of the time, when <laughs> including Jordan, Ayi. including Jordan, Ayi, <laughs> when you see coaches consistently <laughs> pick and stick with players, listeners, means, listeners and seeing, viewers, Daniel is Jordan's <laughs> biggest fan. <laughs> No, he doesn't have a point. Okay, Gary, anything else? Um, yeah, basically, he was asked about Mohamed Kudus as well. Yeah. Guys, I've just put it on a platform so you can blast it. He was asked about Kudus. This was his quote. With regards to Mohamed Kudus, he's a player that can play in numerous positions. Mm -hmm. Everybody can have an opinion on his best position. For me, it's just about getting the right balance. All right. Balance. Well, that's the thing. Balance is it's, it's extremely crucial. Uh, but from wherever you... you it, um, you're tuning, at, uh, you're tuning in from. It's very, very important that you've, you've joined us here. We really appreciate your time. Um, the first game, before we go, guys, the first game on Thursday, there will be certain things you will all be looking out for. Yeah. And it's important to start well. It's crucial. For you, Daniel, what would you consider a great start for Chris Hutton? Maybe from performance-wise, individuals-wise, results-wise, what would you consider a great performance that would immediately get the fans behind him. First of all, we need to get the result. That is win. And in winning, <laughs> Repeat um, that. we need to get the result. That is win. That's the most important thing. And um, I'm not necessarily looking for a flamboyant, flashy performance. I want efficiency. So if it's about limiting the chances the Angolans create, that is good. It's about taking the chances that you create. If you, take, if you create two good chances, at least you should be getting one goal. If you create three, at least you should be getting two. I want that efficiency and I want that controlled performance. And I'm not talking about control in terms of possession, <laughs> but control in terms of the fact that the opposition doesn't have their, uh, uh, that ability to breach your backline, yeah. breach you, uh, cause you trouble. So that is exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm saying that because of the Chris Hilton I know. Creating a team that is very difficult to beat, a team that frustrates you when you play against them. And that's what I'm expecting to see. Gary? Okay. What I'm looking for, one, is the three points. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, nothing else is important for me. Um, good football can come after a few games into his reign. Yeah. I want to see that the Black Stars um, are having continuity from the World Cup. I know our time is up, and I want to see a good atmosphere for me. These are the three things I'm looking for. It. All right, interesting, yeah. indeed. So. That's that. Uh, that's been our coverage of Chris Heaton's unveiling. It's been live on Joy News, Joy FM, as well as Joy Prime. We've also been streaming on our social media handles on YouTube and on Facebook as well. Um, 
My name is Fentio Tahiro Fentio. We will bring you a live commentary of that game on Thursday on 99.7 Joy FM from Kumasi. And we have coverage and a lot of reactions on Chris Eaton's unveiling across all of our channels and all of our bulletins here at Joy Sports. Until next time, show produced by Muftar Nabila and assisted by Mubarak Haruna. Thanks for your time.